of little faith. So there's little faith. Then number two says no faith, which is found in Mark 4 and 40. And he said, and he said, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Now there was no faith. They had no faith. No. And then number three he says Mark, I mean Matthew eight ten. He said Jesus said unto Jesus heard it and he marvelled and said unto him that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. That was talking about the centurion uh, soldier, the general. And Jesus said, Wow, he was marveled at the man's faith that it was so great. And First Timothy 15 talks about unfeigned faith. Unfeigned faith. First Timothy what? First Timothy 1.15. Unfeigned. Un the word unfeigned means not real or is fake and phony faith. This folk can fake and fake the faith. Fake the, the stuff. They fake it. But it's not real. You never know. Faith will cause you to overcome every negative situation in your life. He says, For I say unto you, it is born of God who that overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. So your faith overcomes every negative situation and every encounter that you have in your life. I'm telling you, Satan will test you at night. He will test you during the day. I'm telling you, last week he tested me to no end. But I'm standing here in faith with the victory. God's promises are yes. And we're going to continue this thing. Amen? Amen. Our time is off. Stand to your feet. back and, and continue, to, and continue to hear this lesson, I'm gonna, we're going to be preaching faith until it comes out your ears. Oh, we, we need it. Hallelujah. Because it takes a season to get the doubt all out. Because every day we're faced with doubt from the radio, the newspaper, the TV, the news. You go outside, there's doubt, there's unbelief. There's something always to cause you to doubt God. And as believers, we must be diligent in the Word of God to counteract what the enemy is saying. Hallelujah. The fact that we deal with our own flesh, because the Bible says in Romans, the seventh chapter, that our flesh is an enemy to God. Yes. You are your worst enemy. No, nothing else. You. If you get you under control, you got you won half the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Five o'clock, my flesh don't want to get up and pray. That's my prayer time. God told me your prayer time is five o'clock. He don't want to pray. He don't want to read the word. He don't want to do the Christian walk. You know? You're being in line somewhere and God says, Tell this person about God. I'm like, I don't want to tell them. But the flesh don't want to do it. You. He's, like, He's wrestling. Why are you wrestling if you're born again? And God has delivered you from so much. And yet, you wrestle with telling people about Jesus. Mm. That's amazing. We get caught so caught up in tradition and man-made stuff, we forget about the Great Commission, which is people that are dying and that are one heartbeat from Him. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Say to yourself, ask yourself, what is the last time you witnessed to someone and told them about Jesus? Yes. Or you shared about the goodness of God to somebody. Thank you, Lord. And you told them that God delivered you and set you free. I remember that passage of scripture where Jesus said, If you be ashamed of me in front of me, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my Father. Richard. Amen? Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's salvation. Remember that, that, that preacher... Bishop Mark said, there is a fountain filled with blood. That's right. Hey, hey. 
Thank you, Lord. There was a fountain filled with blood. Yes, yes. Sinners plunged beneath that blood. Yes, Lord. And all their guilty stain, all their mess is washed away. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, that, that fountain that one day I laid under to ask God to forgive me of my sins and he cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Jesus. We forget about that. That we're sinners saved by grace. Sometimes we forget about that in our walk, in our doing, in our going about doing Christendom. And we forget about the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. That it was by His grace. Yes, yes. You know, God, people all the time, if God can save me, Sabrina, He can save anybody. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. If He can save this dude right here, Woo. He can save anybody. Because I was a mess. I was up. jacked up. I was like, you want to meet and preach the gospel? I was like, Lord, are you having a bad day? <laughs> you can't have me to preach the gospel. And Jesus had to teach me it ain't about you. Yes, right. It's about what I've done. Come on, yeah. It's about what I've done on Calvary that makes the difference. Yeah. Say this with me. God factored in. God factored in. My weakness. My weakness. When he called me. When he called me. Hallelujah. He knew about your hang-ups. He knew about your mess anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Many are called, but few have chosen. Yeah. He chose everybody in here. Thank you, Lord. You're the chosen of God. Yes, Lord. You got sometimes you gotta encourage yourself in the Lord. Donald yeah. Lord sing that song. You got to encourage yourself Hallelujah. in the Lord. Sometimes you just have to do that. I have to encourage myself that I am the righteousness of God. That I'm a peculiar nation, a royal priesthood. There is a spirit that is in me that I cry out, Abba, Abba Father, thank you, Lord. unto him. That's right. My spirit bears witness with your spirit that we're sons of God. Yeah. That we're daughters of God. Amen. Glory to God. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Father, we thank you for the engrafted word that you have given us, Lord. And we thank you and we honor you and we praise you. And Father, we are challenged in our lives, but we're poised and postured for the test. For the world has said there's doom and gloom going on, but we are the righteousness of God. We shall be lenders and not borrowers. We shall be the head and not the tail. We shall be above and not beneath. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The fact that we made it through those doors depicts the greater one that is in us. The fact that we can drive our car to go to our home says the greater is in us. The fact that we have overcome the enemy says the greater works on the inside of us. The fact that we can cry about our situation says the great has worked on a greater thing on the inside of us, God. We thank you and we honor you today and we praise you and we honor and we bless your holy name. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise. Thank you. You can give to him. Thank you, Lord. Open up your mouth and say hallelujah. 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 Say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I 